Unlike virtually every other major Italian city, Venice was founded after the collapse of the Western Roman Empire. The first inhabitants were refugees from the Lombard invasions of the 6th century, and it was only during the early Middle Ages that a recognizable town began to emerge. Venice was also unique in the closeness of its connection with Constantinople. Long after the rest of northern Italy, Venice acknowledged the overlordship of the Eastern Roman emperors, and even after the city drifted out of the Byzantine political orbit, its trade and its culture retained their eastward orientation. This eastward outlook was apparent in the cityscape. The Basilica of San Marco, first built in the early 9th century, was modeled on Justinian's Church of the Holy Apostles in Constantinople. St. Mark's Square, likewise, was inspired by the grand forums of the Byzantine capital. The relationship between Venice and Byzantium took on a new dimension after 1204, when the Fourth Crusade, carried by Venetian ships and led by the Venetian Doge, captured and sacked Constantinople. A Western emperor was installed on the Byzantine throne, and Venice was granted half the city of Constantinople and three-eighths of the former Byzantine Empire. Over the following decades, as a mark of their newfound wealth and ambitions, and to associate their city with the history and authority of Rome, the Venetians imported vast quantities of stone from ancient buildings in Constantinople and other parts of the eastern Mediterranean. The most impressive of these antiquities were displayed in and around the Church of San Marco and the adjoining Piazzetta, where ambassadors and foreign dignitaries were received by representatives of the Venetian Republic. This is the Piazzetta, and here, at what was once the water's edge, are two granite columns, both almost certainly from Constantinople. Inspired by the Roman and later Byzantine tradition of erecting columns in public places, they bear emblems of the city's two patron saints, Saint Theodore, a Byzantine military saint, and Saint Mark. Atop one of the granite columns in the Piazzetta is a winged bronze lion, the symbol of St. Mark. By the time it was brought to Venice in the 13th century, this sculpture was already at least a millennium and a half old. It seems to have come from Cilicia, now southern Turkey, where it must have decorated a temple or an elaborate tomb. In 1797, Napoleon, who had just conquered the Venetian Republic, ordered the lion transported to Paris where it became part of a fountain at the Place des Invalides. Broken in the process of being shipped back to Venice after the Congress of Vienna, it was reassembled and restored to its column, where it remains today. On the other side of the Piazzetta, the south facade of San Marco gleams with marble. Much of this is spolia, stone taken from ancient buildings, and everything that isn't ancient is carved to look as though it were. The most remarkable element in this facade which one art historian called the Trophy Wall, are the porphyry statues of the Tetrarchs embedded in one corner. Here we have the Tetrarchs, Diocletian, Galerius, Maximian, and Constantius, the College of Emperors who preserved the empire through the crises of the late third century. You can see how rich their costumes are, the gems on their belts, their scabbards, and even their shoes. This sculpture likely came from Nicomedia, Diocletian's capital, before being moved to Constantinople. At a glance, the four statues seem almost identical. There are, however, subtle differences. For example, two of the tetrarchs are bearded, and two are not, probably to distinguish the senior emperors Diocletian and Maximian from their junior colleagues, Galerius and Constantius. In Constantinople, these statues were apparently displayed in a place known as the Philadelphian, where they may have been repurposed to represent the sons of Constantine. They were brought to Venice soon after the Fourth Crusade, as were the so-called Pilastri Acritani. These are the Pilastri Acritani, the pillars of Acre. As their name suggests, they were long thought to have been taken from the Genoese at Acre, but in fact they came from Hagios Paleuctus in Constantinople, 
a 6th century church built by Princess Anikia Juliana that was so spectacular, Justinian's Hagia Sophia was built to rival it. There are other fragments on the side of the church in modern Istanbul, and like these, they're ornamented with a spectacular array of vines, crosses, and Greek monograms. The church of Hagios Paleuctus, from which the columns were taken, was one of the most spectacular buildings in Constantinople. Built by Nikia Juliana, the daughter and granddaughter of emperors, it was a huge domed structure, richly decorated with mosaics and reliefs. It was apparently in ruins by the 13th century, when the Venetians plundered its stone. The so-called lily capitals also came from Hagios Paleuctus. Beside them is another relic, almost certainly from Constantinople, this truncated porphyry column. The truncated porphyry column a short distance from the Pilastri Aquitani is known as the Pietra del Bando. Said, like the pillars beside it, to have come from Acre, it was probably another spoil of Constantinople and may have belonged to one of the columns supporting the tetrarchs. For centuries, the heads of Venetian traders were displayed here. This practice inspired the name of the ancient porphyry head on the balustrade above the Pietra del Bando. Almost certainly a portrait of Justinian from Constantinople, the head is known as La Carmagnola, after an unfortunate 15th century captain whose head was displayed on the pillar below. There are literally hundreds of ancient columns embedded in the facade of San Marco. Many, perhaps most, came from Constantinople. The present basilica of San Marco was completed in the late 11th century. Originally a plain brick structure, it received its spectacular marble revetment over the course of the 13th century, along with the most famous of its many spolia, the four gilded horses on its balcony. Taken from the Hippodrome of Constantinople, where they may have decorated the starting gates, the horses were probably cast as a matched set in the 2nd or 3rd century, possibly for a triumphal arch of Septimius Severus. Like the Lion of St. Mark, they were stolen by Napoleon and only returned to Venice after the Congress of Vienna. Like so much else in and around San Marco, the horses evoked Imperial Constantinople. They accentuated the power of the Doge. San Marco, after all, was his private chapel. But also, and more importantly, they created a past for Venice, a Roman history that ennobled and legitimized. In February 1438, as a sort of symbolic coda to all this triumphalism, the Byzantine Emperor John VIII visited Venice. Escorted by the Doge's ceremonial barge, he and his advisors landed at the Piazzetta with great fanfare. Soon after, they were shown the treasures from Constantinople, displayed in San Marco. A member of the Byzantine delegation recorded his feelings. These things were brought here by right of conquest after the Latins captured our city. Those who possess them now are proud, but we, from whom they were taken, feel only sorrow. I have a new book, Insane Emperors, Sunken Cities, and Earthquake Machines. More frequently asked questions about the ancient Greeks and Romans. It's a sequel to Naked Statues, Vac Gladiators, and War Elephants, and it's available for pre-order now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and through your local bookstore. If you're interested in more Told and Stone content, including my podcast, check out my channel, Told and Stone Footnotes. I also have a channel called Scenic Routes to the Past, which is dedicated to historically themed travel. You'll find both channels linked in the description. Last but not least, please consider joining other viewers in supporting Told and Stone on Patreon. Thanks for watching.